Did you know that Fallout 4 is still getting new DLC? Because today I'm going to show you several completely free DLCs you can download right now for Fallout 4. This of course thanks to modders. And for this video I'm focusing on those true DLC sized mod experiences. One download that will add in hours of new content to Fallout 4 and give you completely new ways to play this game. A totally distinct way to play Fallout 4's main story, a new horrific experience to go on, and of course mods that add the Enclave back in. If you like these type of videos you probably should subscribe. I'm planning to document basically every single DLC sized quest mod for Fallout 4 that exists right now and this is just the beginning. First up we have the bleachers which really feels like one of those must download quest mods for Fallout 4 at least in my eyes. Diamond City is pretty cool but the back of Diamond City the bleachers kind of suck and are actually very forgettable. Like think to yourself when was the last time you walked around back here? The bleachers is going to add in a totally new location and a variety of new NPCs of course with with quests to the back of Diamond City in the bleachers part, obviously. And this mod feels incredibly Fallout, which is why I feel like it's a must download. The location is home to a ragtag group of odd and very interesting characters. It features a Nuka World satellite location built for the World Series that never happened in Diamond City because, you know, the bombs dropped. But this is one of the most unique design locations in all of Fallout 4 and of course has a very wacky and interesting character to go along with it. But there are a bunch of other characters that are all over the top with their own identity, personality, and more importantly, quests. This mod features a fully fledged questline that will introduce you to each of these characters and even have them tagging along with you. The best part about this though, and one of the reasons I love this mod so much, is how well integrated it is into Fallout 4. This will take you to some of the familiar locations around the Commonwealth with a specific task in mind and really give those places some additional purpose. Over time, you'll build up an allegiance with this group and they will grow genuinely closer to you and unlock additional options for you. But even further, these characters actually live in this world. World. They discuss fearing the Institute, the ongoing synth problem, and even how they have strong opinions on the Diamond City Mayor, with one of the characters even having very close ties to the Atom Cats, which of course is one of the best factions in Fallout 4. And in the end, after completing this questline, you will be left with your very own player home here in the bleachers of Diamond City, as well as a plethora of other rewards. But again, the reason I love this is it really flushes out some of the underutilized aspects of Fallout 4 with genuinely interesting characters that really feel Fallout. And the best part is, this mod is still getting updates, mostly in the form of fixes as of right now, but a sequel is coming with the Fens Sheriff Department that will add in new lore, locations, and of course, a ton of new quests for you to experience. And with the sequel on the way, that makes this a very good time to experience the bleachers for yourself. But speaking of truly feeling Fallout, we also do have Lima Detachment. Lima Detachment is going to be a significantly more isolated experience when compared to the bleachers, but it still feels ingrained in Fallout's lore, and honestly, is literally ingrained in Fallout's lore. Following the Great War, the Enclave set up several forward operating locations in the Commonwealth. But with this Commonwealth force being a bit on the smaller scale, these locations have remained in the background. But now, of course, it's our task and it's time to take them out. And more importantly, in the purposes of this mod, collect some of their equipment that we find in the process of taking them out. This quest mod will involve you fighting against the Enclave and exploring their established presence in the Commonwealth. You'll fend off against the Enclave in a variety of new locations that they have set up that are Enclave themed, but it also does a really great job at establishing why the Enclave are here and just building off of the Enclave lore. All throughout these places, you're going to find terminal entries and more that explain why the Enclave have set up shop in the Commonwealth, and perhaps even more importantly, what they were actually doing here this whole time, the data collection and other information they have been processing, as well as the dungeons themselves as you experience them are incredibly well made. The lighting will definitely strike you and also kind of give them this mysterious or spooky vibe at points and considering some of these are hundreds of years old, is incredibly well fitting. But also the decoration is really good. These places are tough. They have real challenges because you are fighting against strong enclave soldiers at points. But with that comes a ton of good loot and it feels like there are actual soldiers here that we're preparing. They're decorated in a very appropriate way for that. And that's really the second part of this mod. You're fighting off against the enclave, but you get a ton of rewards once you beat them. There's a ton of new power armor styles added into Fallout 4 that you can use, but 
more importantly, a fully fledged new player home with a previously used Enclave bunker. This place is perfect if you like the older school player homes from past Fallout games and even comes with some special or unique features and of course a very distinctive design and layout. But what actually became my favorite part about this mod was some of the Enclave engineered chem items. These range from souped up versions of the typical Fallout 4 chems to even some more unique items like one time use books. You loot these all throughout the adventure as you're clearing out the Enclave locations and fending off against them, and it almost gave me Mothership Zeta vibes. Like you were getting unique items from a distant people, but there's only a limited supply and they are very valuable. And that was really the core of this mod, but this one too has been getting a ton of updates, with the most recent update coming just a month ago. Over time, they've been adding in a bunch of additional content from other past Fallout factions, and this in a very lore-friendly way, such as a crashed NCR Vertibird and some unique items from their faction that you could find and earn. Overall, I think this mod has two things going for it. On one hand, it's a really fun experience. The quests are very interesting. They'll take you to cool and interesting places, and specifically those dungeons are really memorable, but it also adds in a plethora of unique things to find and get rewarded with in Fallout 4, which really makes this one stand out. Thus far in this video, we've been focusing on mods that maintain that traditional Fallout feel. Galactic Retribution does the opposite of that. This mod is going to add in a totally new faction into Fallout 4, and perhaps more importantly, a new way to play. A group of mercs has moved into the Commonwealth, these known as the Varangian Guard, and the design is incredibly interesting, as they are functionally a cross between a paramilitary force and Mandalorians, like the Star Wars Mandalorians, which oddly enough does fit pretty well into Fallout 4's modding scene, particularly, perhaps not lore-friendly in a traditional standpoint, but if you look at the Fallout 4 mods, this does kind of work somehow. These guys are tactically over the top and do feature a ton of modern military tropes, but more importantly, they also offer you a ton of different quests to do. Right at the bat, this is a faction that you can complete Fallout 4 with, it has hooks into the major story moments, and gives you a completely new way to play in that sense. And it even adds in the functionality of you having to help Preston, if you want to. Once you arrive at the Museum of Freedom, a countdown will start, and if you don't save Preston, he will be terminated forever. Those raiders will overtake him. With this story in the quest, the gunners become more of a bad guy against this faction, and this mod definitely upgrades them. It adds in a new armor, and the gunners are big users of this, giving them a more modern military look but also just making them more notable, more powerful as a faction. You'll be raiding gunner bases on missions as you help the Varangian Guard get set up and established in the Commonwealth, which is really the core of the early parts of these quests. And this mirror is what you do in the early Fallout 4 quests. You're going to be talking to familiar people, going to familiar locations. But of course, this time for a completely new and unique faction. But of course, this is a merc group, so in addition to that, you can complete bounties here. You could trade pounds of flesh for Beskar, and if you get enough Beskar, you could actually get some very notable and very powerful weapons. That does feel like a nice little added cherry on top with this bounty system. And this overall experience does come with quite a few unique features, such as an alternate fast travel system with this truck that does have some very nice quest tie-ins. Overall, from a story perspective, I always love mods that turn Fallout 4 into more of an RPG, and this definitely gives you that. A completely distinctive faction to experience the game with, as well as new story elements that allow you to beat Fallout 4 in a different way, as well as just do the normal things of finding Sean and dealing with Sean once you find him, but it also give you this very cool new armor. Part of this mod is just this very awesome, incredibly modular, and incredibly modifiable new armor set. There are a ton of new armor pieces that you will get. And of course, these will be occupying the faction overall, kind of giving them a unique identity and definitely making them stand out in Fallout 4, but also doing the same with the Gunners. And this is actually another mod that has been getting a ton of updates as of late, mostly on the side of bug fixes, but they have a massive expansion coming to the mod with the Mercs and Music update, making this a very good time to get into this one also. Maxwell's World is a mod that probably sounds at least somewhat familiar to some of you. And that's because this was one of Fallout 4's very first DLC side quest mods. The core of Maxwell's world is you are on a rescue mission. Someone notable in the Commonwealth has lost their sister, and it's your job to enter this horrifying abandoned theme park and bring them out. But of course, once you actually enter this horrifying abandoned theme park, you can't actually just leave. You are stuck here, with Maxwell himself horrifying you all throughout. But the pretty awesome part being, even though this mod originally came out in 2016, it just recently started getting new updates. As of this month, new fixes are being added so it'll work perfectly with the current version of Fallout 4. Meaning, you should play this one. Even if you played it years ago, you should play it again. It's that good, and especially if you have never experienced this for yourself. Maxwell's World is like a haunted Disney world 
world. This mod will turn the rules of Fallout 4 on their head and has all kinds of very spooky and unique interactions, as well as some very strong characters. Comedy is core here, and Maxwell's world has some very self-aware and very funny moments. Oh god, here he goes again. Don't sign them. Please be aware, according to the code section 6 subsection B article 2.3, that by assisting any Brotherhood endeavors you agree to the forfeit of any and all items deemed higher technology, the specifics of which are detailed in article 5. But also scary ones. This definitely has that haunting undertone, and there are some pretty spooky moments, especially if you're playing on higher difficulties. There are ghosts here, and you are stuck inside the theme park with them. There are a plethora of unique threats, several of which are theme park themed, like fighting a merry-go-round or a zombified theme park mascot, but also just the general spooky, scary, haunted threats. Over time, as you play through these quests, you're going to unlock additional sections of the park that keeps things feeling fresh. And, well, you have to do things, because if you want to get out of here, you have to unlock all the parts of the park. And overall, it's just a very unique experience, not really a Commonwealth add-on, because this one takes you somewhere else. You are isolated here, but it's a very fun and very unique one-off experience that I definitely recommend trying. But overall, those are four DLC-sized quest mods you can download right now for free for Fallout 4. But literally all of these getting updates in 2022, and two of these actually having major expansions on the horizon. It's a great time to be modding Fallout 4. I have a lot more content on this game coming, and specifically a lot more of these DLC-sized quest mods coming. With that said though, as always again, I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.